Hi, it's Dr. Games and welcome to another Gamer Skills video. Today I'm going to talk about how you modify Blu-rays. Um, and that is a very complex topic, truth and lending. So a couple things, we're going to use uh, several programs. We're going to use uh, something called BD Edit, which is uh, just Blu-ray Blu Disc Edit. And I've got version 0 0.39 Bravo. We're going to use something called BD Info, uh, and that does just what it sounds. Uh, and I've got version, looks like 0 0.5.8. Uh, you're going to need some way of mounting your disks, uh, the ISOs of your disks, and turn them into virtual disks. Uh, there's a lot of free programs. I, I do enough stuff with virtual disks that I decide to uh, take the plunge and actually buy a purchase a copy of something and then we're going to use something called TS Muxer and I've got a GUI version 2.6.11 uh, I've actually got several versions on the system and all of them will work fine so uh, let me talk about what I did first and the process I'm going to apply here can be applied to any modification that you're going to do to Blu-rays you just you have to be a little bit careful. So what I did is I created a uh, dummy. There's a, another set of videos that I'm either are posted before this will be soon afterwards. And I put together just this uh, dummy Blu-ray disc. Let me talk a little bit about the characteristics or properties of it. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is consolidate my DVDs and put them all onto a Blu-ray as my archival copies for a couple reasons. One is, if you have Blu-ray player, then I, I don't have to carry around a stack of, of uh, DVDs. That's particularly true with a series like Castle and uh, other TV series that I watch where I could put potentially 10 or 11 episodes on a single Blu-ray, which is a lot handier than carrying around the disc. Um, so to do that, uh, and that's just a regular single layer average Blu-ray. I'm going to do it in MPEG-2 format. AVC is the other format. This is kind of the standard bitrate. Uh, and then, of course, that's widescreen. And that's the typical NITSI DVD uh, resolution. It only allows you the choice of 29.97, uh, which is 1,000, or I'm sorry, which is 30 divided by 1,001. And then I've done mine in LPCM, which is just regular PCM stereo, 16 bits, 48 kilohertz, which is the typical kind of thing. So, um, and you, you see that I've actually already done the ISO for this and it's out there. But I wanted to show you what those characteristics are like. The key thing is that the final number of movies that I'm going to have on this disc are represented here. Uh, a mistake I made the first several times I tried to do this process was I went ahead and I put in two copies of the same video, but unfortunately DVD Architect was smarter than me, and uh, which is that's awful when the computer's more clever than you are, and said, oh, I've got the same video. So it just actually produced the buttons going to uh, two, two buttons going to the same film. Uh, which of course was smart, but uh, led me to all kinds of problems that I had a hard time figuring out. So let me just show you what what this looks like very briefly. We're previewing the disc, and there's some sound going on in the background. I've got it set up so you can pick either one of these videos, and it goes in the videos. The videos are very, very short, and then it uh, comes back to the main menu. So. And that's really all I needed it to be able to do. So we'll go ahead and clear that out. We're not going to use DVD Architect again for a little bit. 
So one of the things that's important is keeping information and not all of it is going to be uh, readily available once you get into this process and I've learned a long time ago it's a real good idea to write some of it down. Uh, usually I write it on a piece of paper just by the side of the computer just for the record I'm doing this because I'm doing a tutorial. First thing we're going to do after I've opened that up is I'm going to go ahead and mount this uh, sample disk okay and now it is listed in my system as F drive so we'll go ahead and pull up BD info and I will go right to that uh, notice that it has it listed there and it's got the uh, BDVM BDMV folders down below it so we'll open that up and it's got three playlists now Turns out this is the menu, zero is the menu, and one and two are the two videos. They are two separate files, and that will be important in a second. Uh, the thing to write down here is from our playlist that that is the menu, and then we've got video one video two now because of the end uh, and notice that uh, these this one is the menu is showing that's got interactive graphics in this particular case there are no graphics although later when we add subtitles they will be your graphics as well um, most important to me is that it's got, uh, it's recognizing the right kind of audio, etc. So, I, and you'll see in a bit, we're not going to need this again, so I can get rid of that. And at this point, what I'm going to do, let's take a look at that file itself. So I go here, I'm going to right click on it because it's going to try to play it as the default. I'm just going to open it up and uh, let's take a look at it see what's on the inside we're going to be dealing with three folders in particular on here uh, the the clip info and the stream files and then the playlist those that'll be it everything else we're going to leave alone everything else we're going to leave alone so we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at the streams and if we do that, we see that we've got the zero, which is just going to be the, uh, we'll just play it so you can see that. That is the menu, right? That is the menu going on there. And then we've got the two videos and it's got them listed separately, which is really important because again, uh, last time I discovered that uh, it decided that it wanted to consolidate them and it just gave me no ends of issues because I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't figure out. Also notice that this is 720 by 480, which is also important. All right, so we're, uh, and, the, and you can see some of the same information listed here. It's 29.97 actually, it's listed as 29. And associated with each one of these are O files. Notice that these are very small, though they'll get bigger when we put bigger files in there. Um, this is, by the by, kind of sort of the equivalent of the IFO files when you do a DVD. These are indexed and they got information for the system about those files. Uh, I'm going to leave this open for the moment because we'll actually come back to that. Okay, so I've prepared some files here that uh, we will use during this process. Um, we've got the, the sample ISO right there. I've got what I call the intermediate remuxed EDAs uh, representing the two files, the larger files that I'm going to put together. You'll see that in a second. And then I've got what I call the remix final. So what I'm going to do for that is I am going to copy from my virtual drive onto a hard disk. The, uh, the, and it goes very quickly because they're pretty small at this point. Uh, the files for a 
what I know to be a working copy. All right? So now we're going to uh, open up TS Muxer and we're going to produce two files. Uh, first one we're going to do, so we'll go to desktop and then I've got where I have actually produced a uh, MT2TS file, I'm sorry, where I've actually put together two files and you can see that uh, and that's going to be important here in a second to let me copy that information down. So video one is, that's, here's video one here. It is two hours, two minutes, and 24 seconds and some change. And video two Two is one hour, 57 minutes, it, it, it actually doesn't matter if you get, you get it exactly right, but it looks like zero eights, because we're, we're going to always shave off a second on there, so uh, that's also a useful piece of information. But for the moment, we're going to do this for the, uh, the first file, we'll bring that in. It recognizes that it's got a uh, 720 by 480 frame rate at 29.97, which is all for the good. And in this particular case, it's showing a Dolby, and that's that's going to be important. Now, notice that earlier it was showing an LPCM. Uh, we're going to have to modify that, uh, but I, and I'll show you how to do that when the time comes here. I'm also I, I like subtitles, so I'm going to go ahead and add some subtitles to this. So we'll go back here. And I've got that under our uh, Oak Tree Studios base set. So, he, and I have them in SRT format. Uh, those of you who watch videos before know that subtitles come in all different kinds of formats. So, I will come back here again and let. All right, very good. I'm going to not do TS muxing. I'm not going to do M2 TS muxing. I'm going to create Blu-ray folders. And in fact, that's exactly where I want to put it. I want to put it in black one. So is there anything else I need to do? Let's go here. A Blu-ray. I think the only thing is that I, in fact, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to leave these all alone. Uh, notice that it's got play sound at end and all that. Use latest output folder name. It's going to mux at a variable rate. That's all for the good. That that just means that it's essentially going to do a copy. Uh, and then insert chapters every five minutes. That's probably not a bad idea. Uh, split and cut. No, don't do anything with that. And subtitles. You can come in here and you can modify if you want to. If you want to make the subtitles bigger or move them around or that kind of thing. I am not going to worry about all that though. Just make sure I got that. Got the right folder. I'm going to mux. And normally I would uh, turn off the video while this is going on, but look at how fast this goes. Holy Moses. So we'll just, uh, we'll wait here for a second and, and hum a happy tune for the, uh, the very, very short amount of time it takes to do that. And in fact, I'm going to do the, uh, I will cut off the video here though, because this is, it, it's going to be an exact duplicate for the uh, next one. So I will see you when the next one is done. Okay, welcome back. I have uh, finished muxing the second one. Took about 30 seconds. Uh, pretty quick, but uh, probably longer than you wanted to watch something spin around the screen. So now we're going to open up two sets of files. Uh, we've now got this remux, so we're going to, I told you we're going to look at two areas. One is stream. And the other one's going to be the CLPIs. One is I will delete this. Yep. And I'm going to relabel this as one. Notice that if I hadn't been careful, it would have changed the extension on that, which is not good. So let's go now to, um, I'll, I'll just stay with the, the uh, with this one and we'll go here and we'll go to the CLP the clip info 
and I'll get rid of one. Yep. Go here to clip info. And I'm gonna change that to one as well. I'm put that over here. And now let's do the same thing for the second movie. Since I'm already in the clip info area, we'll just get rid of two. Notice that it's a much longer movie. This is an actual full length two hour movie rather than a couple minutes and it's much larger. It's got more information is really what's included in the clip uh, It's not why it's a little longer is because it has more information and it also has things like chapters and that type of thing in it. All right, so we know that this has got to be changed to two. There we go. I'll put that in there. And then we'll go to the stream and do the second stream as well. Again, this is two hours and two minutes, which matches what we had before. This is... That's interesting, so it says 23 now, so hang on a second, I'm going to change that. Um, because uh, as much as you possibly can, you want to make sure it's shy of that mark. You don't want it to get into here at incognita here. All right, so we'll change also that to 2 and move it over, get rid of the short little one there. Okay, now we're all done with this uh, intermediate remix portion. Well, welcome back. So now what we're going to do is we'll open BD Edit. All right, so let's go ahead and head to one. And uh, again, we just and we just want to make sure that uh, the basic things are correct here. It's got uh, it's got its audio and video, and then it's got interactive graphics. That'll be the only one that's like that. So let's go to one, and it it's in time as listed as one second in. That's probably not right. Hang on a sec. All right, I guess it is. All right, uh, but the out time the out time should be listed as two hours. That's why we wrote that down. Zero two, zero two, and I'm going to change it to 22. And now we see that the length of it has changed. Now, the, what's the next thing we want to do? Well, video, let's check that. MPEG, 480i, 2997, that's good. Audio, oops, LPCM, not good. So. We know that it's Dolby Digital. If you add the plus, it'll go out and find that Dolby Digital. This is what you do too if you want to add multiple language tracks and that kind of thing. That's not correct anymore. We're going to get rid of that. And notice it that it doesn't have our subtitles listed. So let's go ahead and add those. And that's all for the good. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And we'll do the same thing for two. So in times good out time, we'll change that to 157.07. Let's do that. Very good. And the, the length looks good. So let's go ahead and check the audio. Same thing. Um, we're going to go ahead and add the Dolby Digital in there. Get rid of the LPCM. Let's add our subtitles. Excellent, it all looks good, and let's save. That is really it. So let's, we'll, the next time you'll see it, we'll be testing it out. All right, welcome back. So now I have burned the Blu-ray, and I brought up on my uh, PC, Corel Win DVD, which is the program I use for looking at Blu-rays on the computer, testing them out. I also have Blu-ray player. But rather than rig up my uh, video camera, etc., we'll just watch it on here. Um, one of the questions that uh, I was asked when I talked about doing this video was, why would you ever do this? Well, the reason is, is that different programs have vastly different speeds when it comes to converting things into Blu-rays. So, for example, I use Corel Video Studio Pro X2 and X6 and X8. They all have different capabilities that I like. 
Uh, X2 and X6 will convert things into Blu-rays super fast. Whereas uh, if in another video that I'll have out soon, I'm going to show how you do the process using Sony Vegas and uh, Sony DVD Architect. And literally, you're cooking movies. If you're, if you're talking about feature-length movies, you're talking about cooking things overnight. And uh, that, in this particular case, you could use all of the architectural features associated with the buttons and different menus and kinds of things. And you could get all that set up in DVD Architect with a couple slug files in there. Uh, you could produce those in 10 minutes or so, produce the basic ISO that we saw in the previous video. And then, uh, for an example, for these two movies, for Black 1 and Black 2, it actually took less than 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, converting them from DVD into Blu-ray, less than 10 minutes. So, and they, they show perfectly fine, by the way, so why not take advantage of that extra speed and then swap things out later? Of course, there's other stuff you can do as well that we saw, and uh, really BD, BD edits a program that you can just play around with and find all kinds of things you can do. Let's see if it works now. So obviously the uh, menu's working. And let's see if one of the movies will come up. Yeah, it's saying it's the right format and everything and Dolby Digital, right? That's simple, that's great. Let's see if the subtitles are there. And yay verily. Okay. So guess what? The thing works. So there you have it. Uh, you can use this to do a variety of things to your Blu-rays. You can add different languages. You can add subtitling for different languages. Uh, you can change the resolution on the videos. So all of those things possible by DD, D, BD Edit. Easy for me to say. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and subscribe and support the channel. Have a great day. Thank you so much.